Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper for DCS World and today we're going to be taking a look at the fire control radar. Um, primarily we're going to be taking a little spin around the block taking a look at all the different buttons and indicators and sort of how to manipulate it to get to the screens that we want and what the information being displayed on it as it currently is without context. Okay and the next tutorial we'll actually put some contacts on the screen and start seeing how to uh, lock targets up and track targets and, and uh, manipulate the information, or I should say extrapolate the information that we need to um, execute a, a strike on a target. Okay, now the first thing that you're going to want to be aware of when getting into this is you're going to want to make sure your FCR switch is in the forward position. And this is little switch right here where the green is. Um, that is FCR for fire control radar. The full name for the F-16 is the ANAPG-68 fire control radar. Um, and uh, it has a bunch of different modes that makes it pretty slick to use. It's very similar in many ways to the F-18 Hornet for those of you who watch that, and in many ways it's a little different. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get our camera locked up where it needs to be here. And actually, just regard that, let's back up for a second. Let's talk about some controls that you guys are going to need real fast, okay? So let's go into Adjust Controls. Right off the bat, there's one you're going to want is the antenna elevation controls clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay, so what this will allow you to do is uh, pitch the um, radar up and down, okay, which is essentially a, a very important part of the process. By the way, I made this disclaimer with the F-18, I'm going to make it just the same with the F-16. If you do not understand how radar does what it does, not what it does, if, if you do not understand how it does, how it sees, what its limitations are, um, there will be three links in the description below to a, an old F-15C tutorial that I did for the radar, but it's very, very in-depth and goes into extreme detail on how radar sees, where its blind spots are, and what you need to do as the pilot to manipulate it. That way you maintain contact of the battle space, okay, and keep your situational awareness up. <clears throat> So if you don't understand the hows of radar, please stop this one for a moment. Go down and watch those. Yes, they're a bit long, but there's a ton of information. You should be very comfortable, at least with an understanding of, of what's happening outside the nose of the aircraft, okay? All right, so let's keep moving down here. The next thing you're also going to want is you're going to want your data management switches mapped, okay? There's four of them there. You're also going to want your um, target management switches mapped. You're going to want your uh, depressed switch mapped obviously your uh, gun trigger, weapons release. Um, we will be talking about these much later, but you're gonna want zero, three, and four mapped, your missile override, your dogfight mode, and your center, okay? Um, ideally, um, all three, but definitely uh, at least three and four, okay? Um, and then going into your axis assign, if you have that ability, you're also going to want these guys here. Okay, your radar cursor switches, which basically is the radar TDC, allows us to move it around the, the radar scope. Okay? Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is sensor of interest. Okay, how do you know what our sensor of interest is? Well, if we hit DMS up, for example, okay, you can see this asterisk that appeared up on the HUD. This indicates that the HUD is our sensor of interest. Okay, and if we move our TDC controller, notice that the radar isn't moving. If we hit DMS down, it will automatically go to wherever the fire control radar page is. So, for example, if we do this, okay, and we do a swap and hit DMS down again. Oh, I lied. Shit. Now, to make the bottom MFDs your sensor of interest, what we do is we hit our DMS down. Okay, and it will swap between the left and the right. Okay, so down, DMS down, DMS down, DMS down, DMS down. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and make our sensor of interest the radar. And again, that's identified by the white box around it. And let's go ahead and zoom our screen in. Wrong direction. And let me get my camera paused here. Okay. And let's take a look at a few things that we have here. So we're just going to take a spin around the block for things that are critical and that are functioning. There's a few of these that aren't functioning to at the time of making this video, at least. So first you have your CRM, or this is a combined radar mode, and this is the mode switch up here. So if we tap this, we see and see all the different modes that are available. Now, CRM is combined radar mode. This basically combines range wall search, track wall scan, and um, your data link information all into one mode. It's basically the same principle as latent track wall scan that we have for the F-18. Uh, you have your air combat modes that are used for close air combat. 
you have your ground mapping, ground moving target. Now these I do not believe are currently available. You can see that it put us back into CRM when we selected that. Um, you have your C mode, your beacon, and standby. Standby will actually stop the radar dead in its tracks and, and prevent it from transmitting any signal. Okay, now let's, all you do is get out, you hit your mode button again, and go back into CRM. Here you can toggle range while search and track while scan. Okay, now there's an, another way to do this that's a little bit easier. With the data management switch and the target man management switch, you have a long press and a short press. A short press is going to be any depression where you push the button and hold it for less than half a second. Okay, and a long press is obviously the inverse, right? It's going to be any depression that you hold it for more than half a second. If we take TMS right with the radar scope, our sensor of interest, okay, and we hold it for more than half a second, so pressing, holding, letting go you can see that we now have switched into TWS mode. Now it's important to understand that you must let go of the button before the change actually takes place. So I'm gonna press and hold TMS right, pressing, holding, 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 holding. You can see nothing's happening until I let go. So once again, it's just a real quick, about a half a second. So press and hold, let go, okay? Um, and that makes it a lot easier to um, manipulate what radar mode you're in. Then we have norm or expanded field of view. Now ex what expanded is going to do is wherever your TDC is, okay, you hit the expanded view and you can see that it creates sort of this zoom box. And what it allows you to do is if you have multiple targets that are sort of stacked on top of each other and aren't being, and that's why it's not bringing anything up is because there's nothing there. Um, but uh, if you, if we had multiple targets there that were only appearing as a single target, okay, but we know there's more of them or maybe you can tell there's multiple of them but they're stacked so close on top of each other you can't bug one and the other you can put your tdc over it um, or your radar acquisition cursor and then go into the expanded mode and it works like a zoom where you can see each aircraft much much more clearly and we'll see that later in action as we move through the tutorial process um, that was a break x give me a second and that would be why Do, 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 do. All right, well, let's get us out of that nonsense. All right, so, and what you guys just saw there was a break axe letting you know that you uh, have a low altitude warning. So, um, again, another advantage. You guys got to see that one in action of why we always... Uh, pay attention to our warnings when we're heads down. Okay, um, so you know, let's do this. I'm going to put us into a sort of bank here and put us back. Oh, nope, put us back in altitude hold. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the nose to come up. Okay, it's coming up. All right, let's get back into this. So, coming back into here, that will bring us to our next part of the section here, which is, this is the horizon line. You can see now, this is the actual horizon, not the pitch of the aircraft. This is what the horizon line outside the window is doing, okay? Here you have your radar acquisition cursor, okay? Indicating what its current uh, vertical volume is, scan volume is at this range, okay? Here we have the currently selected display range. It's important to remember this does not limit how far the radar is actually going. The radar, radar energy goes, um, you know, for infinity, it can go and go and go, all right? Um, but it will only display anything that's being picked up between here and in this case 40 nautical miles and you can see that we can cycle through that the further out we cycle okay the larger the uh, vertical scan range that we see is all right let's go back down to 40 which brings us over here we have our range display scale okay so up at the top is going to be 40 40 nautical miles away 30 20 10 on the nose okay over here you have your azimuth okay so you have 60 degrees 30 degrees and when you're anything less than 60 degrees you can see that when we move the TDC the scan range moves with us so these are our um, uh, this is the limitations to the radar scan uh, on the uh, horizontal azimuth okay so anything outside of those two lines we will not be able to see and then it comes all the way down to 10 and back to 60 
And then here you have your bars, okay? The bars is the vertical scan, okay? So azimuth is your horizontal. How far am I looking from left to right? Your bars is how much am I looking for uh, vertically? So at, six, at uh, 60 degrees azimuth, four bars, you can see that at approximately 30 miles, we are able to see between 28,000 and negative 7,000 feet. Now, obviously, negative 7,000 doesn't make a difference, okay? Um, that's in the ground. That's 7,000 feet underground. Um, but if we reduce the bars, okay, you're going to see this change. Now we can only see 18,000 to 3,000 feet at one bar. Two bars, okay, you can sort of start seeing the relationship here that the more bars, the more vertical volume you can see. All right. Um, which moves us to this little guy right here. This is the current uh, vertical as or a uh, vertical scan position of the radar. So that's bar four or one, however you want to look at two, three, four. So it lets you know what position the radar is currently in um, as far as the vertical scan. Now, if you use your uh, radar elevation knobs, the clockwise and counterclockwise, we can bring that up. Now, as you see, it comes up. You can see that the altitude at this distance has now changed. Now we're seeing between 67 and 31,000 feet. But the thing to remember is any target that's below 31,000 feet at 30 miles, we will no longer be able to see them, okay? So we would have to move that back down. Um, I've had people, you know, not like this particular analogy. I still think it makes sense to me, at least for, on a very layman's, very basic term. Um, but I want you to think about the radar dish as a flashlight. What happens with a flashlight? You know, you're in a dark room, completely pitch black. You turn the flashlight on. Um, as the flashlight beam gets longer and longer and longer, you can see more and more and more. Okay, think about picturing, point your flashlight at a wall. If you're standing right against the wall, you can only see a very small section. Okay, back away from the wall with that same flashlight and you start seeing more and more and more of it. Same principle of the radar. Okay, the further out it, the radar beam goes, the more it can see. Up and close, the more um, impaired it is. Okay. Over here, you have your bullseye indication, okay? This indicates that we're 84 miles away from the bullseye. It gives you a bearing pointer with a bearing of 180 degrees. Okay, the swap button here allows you to tap that guy and swaps the two MFDs position from left to right, swap them back, and it resets them to where they were, okay? Um, and then obviously here you have your horizontal B-sweep scan, the ready indicating the radar is ready to roll. Now, override is supposed to stop any transmission um, at all from the radar. It doesn't currently work. Control functions don't work and I can't see any uh, use for the continuous at this moment. Okay, um, so that is the uh, radar in a hand basket for the radar display scope. In the next one we will go ahead and put some targets up in the sky as I said and um, start looking at how to use it to identify targets, track uh, files if you will, and um, using it to set up for an attack. All right, guys. So I guess um, stay tuned with me. I know Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has sort of taken me by the chains. I promise I'm going to do better about uh, making sure my DCS buddies haven't been forgotten either. All right. I appreciate the continued support, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you soon.